Luke chapter 6, TPT, the Passion Translation. Jesus and Religious Traditions. One Sabbath day, Jesus and his disciples were walking through a field of ripe wheat. His disciples plucked some heads of grain and rubbed the husk off with their hands and ate it. This infuriated some of the Jewish religious leaders. They said to Jesus, Why are you allowing your disciples to have a screen on the Sabbath day? Don't you know it's not permissible according to the law? Jesus replied, Haven't you read the scriptures? Haven't you read what King David did when he was hungry? He entered the sanctuary of God took the bread of God's presence right off the sacred table and shared it with his men. It was only lawful for the priest to eat the bread of God's presence. You need to know that the Son of Man is no slave to the Sabbath, for I am master over the Sabbath. On another Sabbath day, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue. In the room with him was a man with a deformed right hand. Everyone watched Jesus closely, especially the Jewish religious leaders and the religious scholars, to see if Jesus would heal on a Sabbath day, for they were eager to find the reason to accuse him of breaking the Jewish laws. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand here in the middle of the room. So he got up and came forward. Jesus said to all who were there, Let me ask you a question. Which is better, to heal or to do harm on the Sabbath day? I've come to save a life, but you have come to find a life to destroy. One by one, Jesus looked into the eyes of each person in the room. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your arm and open your hand. When everyone watching, with everyone watching intently, he stretched out his arm and his hand was completely healed. The room erupted with bitter rage because of this Sabbath day event. And from that moment on, the religious leaders plotted among themselves about how they might harm Jesus. Jesus chooses 12 apostles. After this, Jesus went up into the high hill to spend the whole night in prayer to God. At daybreak, he called together all of his followers and selected twelve from among them, and he appointed them to be his apostles. Here are their names. Simon, whom he named Peter, Andrew, Peter's brother, Jacob, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, Jacob the son of Alphaeus, Simon, known as the fiery political zealot, Judah the son of Jacob, and Judas the locksmith, who later betrayed him. Jesus and his apostles came down from the hillside to a level field where a large number of his disciples waited, along with a massive crowd of people who had gathered from all over Judea, Jerusalem, and the coastal district of Tyre and Sidon. They had all come to listen to the manifestation so that they could be healed of their diseases and to be set free from the demonic powers that tormented them. The entire crowd eagerly tried to come near to Jesus so they could touch him and be healed because a tangible supernatural power emanated from him, healing all who came close to him. Jesus taught them what matters most. Looking intently at his followers, Jesus began his sermon. How and which you become when you are poor, for you will experience the reality of God's kingdom realm. How filled you become when you are consumed with hunger and desire, for you will be completely satisfied. How content you become when you weep with complete brokenness, 
for you will laugh with unrestrained joy. How favored you become when you are hated, excommunicated, or slandered, or when your name is spoken of as evil because of your love for me, the Son of Man. I promise you that as you experience these things, you would celebrate and dance with overflowing joy, and the heavenly reward of your faith will be abundant because you are being treated the same way as your forefathers, the prophets. But what sorrows await those of you who are rich in this life only? For you've already received all the comfort you ever get. What sorrows await those of you who are complete and content with yourselves? For hunger and emptiness will come to you. What sorrow awaits those of you who love now? having received all your joy in this life only, for grief and wailing will come to you. What so awaits those of you who are always honored and lauded by others, for that's how your forefathers treated every other false prophet. Love your enemy. But if you will listen, I say to you, love your enemy and do something wonderful for them in return for their hatred. When someone curses you, bless that person in return. When you are mistreated and harassed by others, accept it as your mission to pray for them. To those who despise you, continue to serve them and minister to them. If someone takes away your coat, give him as a gift to shed as well. When someone comes to beg from you, give to that person what you have. When things are wrongly taken from you, do not demand that they be given back. However, you wish to be treated by others is how you should treat everyone else. Are you really showing true love by only loving those who love you back? Even those who don't know God will do that. Are you really showing compassion when you do good deeds only to those who do good deeds to you? Even those who don't know God will do that. If you lend money only to those you know will repay you, what credit is that to your character? Even those who don't know God do that. But love your enemies and continue to treat them well. When you lend money, don't despair if you are never paid back, for it is not lost. You will receive a rich reward and you will be known as true children of the Most High God, having the same character. For your Father is famous for his kindness, to heal even the thankless and the cruel. Show mercy and compassion for others, just as your Heavenly Father overflows with mercy and compassion for all. Judging others. Jesus said, Forsake the habit of criticizing and judging others, and then you will not be criticized and judged in return. Don't look at others and pronounce them guilty, and you will not experience guilty accusations yourself. Forgive over and over, and you will be forgiven over and over. Give generously, and generous gifts will be given back to you shaking down to make room for more. Abundant gifts will pour out upon you with such an overflow measure that it will run over the top. Your measurement of generosity becomes the measurement of your return. Jesus also quoted this proverb. What happens when a blind man pretends to guide another blind man? They both stumble into this. And how could the apprentice know more than his master? For only after he is fully qualified would he be at that level. Why do you focus on the flaw in someone else's life and fail to notice the glaring flaws of your own life? How could you say to your friend, Yeah, let me show you where you're wrong, when you're guilty of even more than he is. You are overly critical, splitting hairs, and being a hypocrite. You must acknowledge your own blind spots and deal with them before you'll be able to deal with the blind spot of your friend. 
fruit of life of your life you would never find choice food hanging on a bad unhealthy tree and rotting food doesn't hang on a good healthy tree every tree will be revealed by the quality of food that it produces figs or graves will never be picked off torn trees people are known in this same way out of the virtue stored in their hearts good and upright people will produce good fruit but out of the evil hidden in their hearts evil ones will produce what is evil for the overflow of what has been stored in your heart will be seen by your fruit and will be heard in your words what good does it do for you to say i am your lord and master if what i teach you is not put into practice let me describe the one who truly follows me and does what i say he is like a man who chooses the right place to build a house and then lays a deep and secure foundation when the storms and floods rage against that house it continues to stand strong and unshaken through the tempest, for it has been wisely built on the right foundation. But the one who has heard my teaching and does not obey it, it's like a man who builds a house without laying any foundation whatsoever. When the storms and floods rage against that house, it would immediately collapse and become a total loss. Which of these two builders would you be?